Hi, this is Don McAllister and welcome to another Tip of the Week video. This tip video is all about working with the Finder. And although Icon View and List View are very useful, I find that Column View is the view that I tend to use probably 90% of the time. So here are some quick tips about using Column View in the Finder. Firstly, by default, you'll find that any new windows that you open, if I close this window down and do a Command N, you'll see that the new window opens with all my files. Uh, I normally don't want to do that. What I tend to do is go to Preferences, and then the new Finder window show, switch that to my Documents. Okay, if we close that down, close down the Finder window and do Command N, you'll see that takes you directly into your Documents folder. Now, as you can see, I've got some uh, folders here and some file names that are longer than the column width. I can actually just double click on the column border and that will actually open it up for me. But if I do Command W to close the window and then do a Command N to bring a window back up again, you'll see that it's uh, sort of reverted back to the original column width. The trick to make it remember your column width is to hold down the Alt or Option key as you drag. So let's say to about there. Now if we close the window down by using Command W and then do a Command N for a new window, you'll see that that column width has been remembered. Now if you want to change multiple column widths, if we go to, let's have a look at uh, this Documents folder. Let me just widen this window up. Uh, you can actually use a Control or right click and get this to right size this column, right size all columns individually, or right size all columns equally. So we might want to do right size all columns individually. You'll see in the second column, uh, second from the bottom, we've got a very long file, N and then three dots. If I actually click on right size all columns individually, we'll get a slightly narrower first column and a much longer second column. Now finally, just one other thing as well. Uh, you might want to switch on scroll bars. If I go back, in fact, let's go back to all my files. Now you'll see I've got a list of files here. Um, but there's no real indication, although you can see just at the bottom of the screen, one file is off the bottom. Now I can scroll with my trackpad, but it's not perfectly obvious that there is actually a scrollable window here. What you might want to do is go to, in fact, it's not the Finder Preferences, you go to System Preferences, and then under System Preferences, go to General, and then switch on uh, Show Scroll Bars Always. Close that down. Now we probably need to... Yeah, we need to just close this window down as well to refresh the screen properly. Do Command N. Right, now we have a proper scroll bar. Um, but the only difference is here, we can't actually adjust the size of this column by dragging the sidebar. What you have to do is just use this control here and you can drag that backwards and forwards. And again, control or right click on this bottom tool will enable you to right size this column, all columns individually or all columns equally. If you want to learn more about using your Apple devices, there are over 700 full video tutorials available to Screencast Online members, covering all aspects of the Mac, iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, and even the Apple TV. Now, all full members receive a new Apple-related video tutorial each and every week, as well as a free subscription to the Screencast Online monthly magazine, packed with videos and articles on getting the most out of your Apple devices. Now, you can get your free 14-day trial membership over at screencastsonline.com or check out some of the free content over on the SEO Showcase app on the iPad, iPhone and Apple TV. That's it for this week. I'll be back next week with another tip, so I'll speak to you then.